Good day everyone, especially to our professor, Mom Shala Nunes, and to all our classmates, I am Maria Eliza Mozo, and I will be reporting all about the discussion method as a teaching strategy. So first, here are my objectives. At the end of the report, you will be able to define discussion method and its types, identify appropriate use of discussion method, discover the, dis the advantages and disadvantages of discussion method, describe planning and conducting of discussion method, and show desire of using the discussion method. So here is my presentation outline. So first, we're going to talk about what is discussion, why use discussion method or the advantages, appropriate use of discussion method, before, during, and after the discussion method, the disadvantages of discussion method and the tips on using the discussion method. So first, what is discussion? So the word discuss has been derived from the Latin root word discutere, which means to shake or strike. Thus, discussion refers to thoroughly shaking up the subject, that is, examining it thoroughly to reach a conclusion. Discussion methods are a variety of for forums of open-ended and collaborative um, exchange of ideas among a teacher, students, or among students for the purpose of furthering students' thinking, learning, problem-solving, understanding, or literary appreciation. So, discussion method is an interactive activity where students talk with each other about a central topic, problem, or a concept. So why use discussion method? So here are some of the advantages of using a dis the discussion method. So first is discussion method is student-centered. With discussion method, students are actively participating, asking questions, and answering the question. So ideally, a classroom discussion consists mainly of students' participation. So the role of the teacher is merely to facilitate and prompt students to keep the discussion flowing. So you as a teacher or the facilitator, you design and facilitate the discussion rather than convey information. Next advantage is discussion method is uh, helps develop oral language so with discussion method students can be able to develop their oral language skills and abilities so as we all know oral language skills serves as foundation for reading and writing skills as well next is it stimulates critical thinking so if planned well and executed correctly using discussion method as a primary teaching method allows your students to stimulate critical thinking so you can demonstrate that you appreciate their contributions at the same time you challenge them to think more deeply and articulate their ideas more clearly next advantage is it, you can easily inject feedback so with discussion teachers easily provide and inject meaningful feedback to the entire group of students next is it is engaging so discussions are a great activity that adds vibrancy excitement engagement social interaction reflection and introspection to the classroom dynamics so students enjoy classroom discussion because they are actively engaged and it gives them a voice to speak out their ideas in mind so those are the advantages of using discussion methods. So here are the appropriate use of discussion method. So first, discussion method is used in areas which students already have some knowledge or experience. So discussion may be used to develop the main points to be covered in the lesson. Next is, discussion method is used in all subjects except mathematics, art, music, and dance. So next is how to use the discussion method. So before the discussion, you have to choose a method to assign students to groups. So here are types of discussions wherein you can group your students. First is the dyadic discussion, the small group discussion, and the whole class discussion. So let's start with the dyadic discussion so the dyadic discussion refers to a face-to-face -face verbal interaction so this is a conversation between 
two individuals that is concerned with their ideas, actions, thoughts, perceptions, likes, dislikes, and so on. Next is the small group discussion. The small group discussion occurs between three to six people. So having a small group discussion is a good choice because in a large group, it is sometimes difficult for all students to take part, especially those who may be shy or feel pressure of speaking in public. Next type is the whole class discussion. So it includes all the learners within the class. So it allows the teachers to hear every learner's thoughts and contribute to the shared common sets of concepts. So those are the three types of um, discussion method in a way that you can group your um, class. Next is develop a clear goal for the discussion. So it is very important because knowing the content to be covered is not enough. Naming the chapter your students will read is not enough. You should be able to articulate what the students will be able to do with the information or the ideas. For example, in history class, for which your students have read about the martial law. So you might want your students to be able to construct legitimate arguments for and against the martial law. So as a facilitator, compose a specific questions that will move the discussions forward. Eliminate major points and prompt students to offer evidence for their assertions and to consider their points of view. So next is clarify the rules and provide a structure for your discussion. So you have to distribute or post on the board a list of rules and expectations that will promote successful um, discussion. For example, um, to discourage students from monopolizing the discussion or interrupting one another, so you have to indicate whether it will be necessary for the students to raise their hands and be called on before speaking. So it depends on your preference and on the size of your class. So each session should have a clear beginning, middle, and and so you have to respond to student contributions in ways that move the discussion forward and keep it focused on the topic at hand. Next is provide opportunities for students to prepare for the discussion. So again, for example, the martial law. So some students are not that knowledgeable enough about the martial law and what happened during that time. So you have to give them a variety of ways to prepare. Like for example, reading, listening, or watching. So students are much more likely to participate if they're familiar with the topic of your discussion. So those are the things you should do before the discussion. So he, here are the things that you should do throughout the discussion. First is incorporate engaging student discussion discussion strategies. So engaging student discussion is the answer to create a culture of speakers, listeners, and um, learners. Next is Affirm, summarize, and redirect as needed. So when the discussion starts to turn off topic, so you may want to let it run for a while but not so long. So to see if any relevant or valuable segue presents itself. If it does, affirm the idea, mention the segue, and then redirect the conversation back to the main objective. So next is use verbal and nonverbal cues to encourage participation. So call on students to answer your questions or not just those who consist cons consistently um, raise their hands. So make eye to eye contact and move around the room to engage the attention of all the students and to communicate that you expect each of them to participate. Next is show respect for all the questions and the comments. So you have to listen carefully, point out what is valuable, and thank students for their contributions. So whether or not you agree or disagree with them. So develop helpful responses to incorrect answers or comments that are not sufficiently related to the issue currently being discussed. Next is do not answer your own questions. So give them time, like 5 to 10 seconds, to think and formulate a response. 
So if 10 to 15 seconds pass without anyone volunteering an answer and the students are giving you puzzled looks, so you have to rephrase your question. So do not give in to the temptation to answer your own question. Patience is the key. Do not be afraid of silence. So those are the things you as a facilitator can do throughout the discussion. So after the discussion, you have to rethink, retool, and revise. So each time you facilitate a discussion, you learn something um, about how best to approach the topic. So you have to take brief notes on how each discussion went and use this as the basis for reorganizing your plan for the discussion. So improving your presentation skills, rethinking the material included, or developing ideas for future teaching and research projects so you can speak with your colleagues about their approaches in using the discussion method or you have you can ask their ideas so if you encounter problems in using the discussion method maybe there is a need to revise the rules and its structures so here are the disadvantages of using the discussion method so first one is not all types of topics can be thought using the discussion method so as what i have said earlier all subjects except mathematics art music and dance can be thought using the discussion method number two this method cannot be used in teaching small children so discussion method is not the ideal um, strategy in using for your small children or the lower grades since they are still um, find it hard they still find it hard to express their ideas due to the limited knowledge and it is applicable for high school or college students so it is somehow applicable also to the higher grades like the grade 5 or the grade 6 number three is the students may not follow the rules of discussion so we cannot expect that everyone will participate and follow the given rules so number four some students may not take part while others may try to dominate. So they are called the discussion monopolizer. So they want to talk all the time. Number five, controversial topics. So in using discussion methods, sometimes they tend to go off topic and may jump to controversial topics. So as a teacher or the facilitator in the discussion, um, be a keen listener and be sensitive to the topics being discussed. Number six, it is time consuming. So obviously, discussion method is time consuming because your goal is to hear every student's ideas. And not all students can think that fast. So you need to give them enough time to think and prepare to what they want to share. Number seven, success is based on proper preparation. So if your discussion was a failure, maybe you need to prepare well enough or you didn't prepare well enough. So it is not enough that you as a teacher is well prepared, but your students are not. So the teacher, the students, and the structure of your discussion should be well prepared. So those are the disadvantages of using discussion methods. So here are some tips in using the discussion method. First is start with creating a classroom environment that every student, every student feels comfortable in. So all necessary preparation should be completed before the discussion begins. So the teacher should see that the students have read the magazines and booklets related to the subject matter. Next is create a list of questions in advance to ask students. So think of questions to get them thinking, engaging, and sparking their minds to think of their own questions. Number three is incorporate phenomena. So Phenomena. So the topic for the discussion should be selected in such a way that this problem is suited for their age and condition and they realize its importance quickly. So for example, in science subject, so about the different theories of how the universe began. So these are so perfect for engaging your students in discussion and getting them excited for the content. So they bring in real world applications to what you are already learning and make it meaningful for your students and number four practice makes perfect so just get started so i know this sounds simple but 
it is not so but like most things the more you do it the more natural it will be for you and for your students so it will become part of the culture of your class but it won't happen overnight so it takes time as I recall during my college days one of our instructors used discussion method as a teaching strategy so at first we were very shy and scared to speak our ideas but Somehow, as we continu continuously use the discussion method, we began to become excited and we started to look forward for the next topics to be discussed for the next meeting. So that, that is all about the discussion method and I hope you learned a lot from my report which is all about the discussion method as a teaching strategy. So once again, I am Maria Eloisa Mozo, your reporter for today. Have a nice day ahead. Thank you.